Intarsia is a knitting technique used to create patterns with multiple colors in knitting. And unlike other multicolor techniques like fair isle or slip stitch, there's only one yarn in play at any given time in this particular method of intarsia. So I'm going to show you a couple of techniques today that will enhance your intarsia experience. And specifically, I'm going to teach you how to join a new color Whereas, like you see, this purple beginning, I'd like to show you the best method to join so that you don't leave a hole here where the two different textures or colors meet. And I'd also like to show you how to weave in ends in the back of your work so that you have really beautiful work as you knit and you don't have a lot of cleanup at the end. So here's another piece, just like this one, that's in progress. And as you can see, with yarn A, I've knit 10 stitches for my border, and I'm ready to add my next color, which is this lovely shade of green. I'm going to go in as if to knit, and just let that right needle hang out there. Take my yarn B, this silk green yarn, and hold it with about a 5 or 6 inch tail. Make a loop. And where I've put that right hand needle into the stitch, I'm just going to drop that over. I'll show you again. You're going to go in as if to knit and just make this loop and drop this over and knit that stitch holding both of those. Now remember I was talking about not leaving a gap here where those two colors are going to meet. So what you want to do on your next stitch, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm going to take yarn A, lift it over yarn B, kind of hold it over here. And then with this yarn, not the tail, but with this yarn, I'm going to knit that stitch. So what's happened is this yarn has, yarn A has been crossed over B, and it keeps those two held nicely together. Now on the next stitch, I'd really like to get rid of this tail. You're always going to have tails in knitting. Even if you're using one color, your cast on and your bind off is always going to leave a tail. And when you've only got two of those ends, you can weave that in with the crochet hook or a darning needle. But when you have multiples, as in a piece like this, it's really lovely to learn how to weave those ends in as you knit. So on the next stitch, just like we did to join A and B, I'm going to take the tail, lift it over the top, of the work in yarn, and I'm just going to knit that stitch. Then I'm not going to do it on the next stitch. On the following stitch, I'm going to take the tail in the back of the work, lift it up and over this yarn, kind of helps to hold it down, and knit the stitch. I do it every other knit stitch or purl stitch simply because you get better tension that way. If you do it every stitch, it's too tight. So I'm lifting that over, kind of holding it over here with these fingers. And as you can see, I'm throwing the yarn, but it's the same idea if you're picking. You're just going to do it every other stitch, lift it up and over the working yarn. And what's happening is you're getting rid of that tail by doing it every other stitch. Some people do it every third stitch. The thicker the yarn, the easier it is to hide something. But on a thin, fine yarn like this, every other stitch is great. And that's pretty much enough. And as you can see on the back of the work, now this is all neatly woven in across this edge. And that is how you weave in ends when you're knitting with intarsia.